What's going on guys? This video is going to be on using the coolant pressure tester and I'm going to show you how to hook it up to the radiator and then pressurize the system. And the reason you would do this is if you're losing coolants um, and you're trying to figure out if you have a leak or if it's being burned or something, this allows you to pressurize the system and then see if, it's if it is in fact losing pressure. If it's losing pressure, that means you do have a leak somewhere and you'd have to go to the next test. I'll be showing you guys um, another video on how to actually locate that leak. So for starters, we've got to take the radiator cap off. Now before you ever take a cap off, you've got to make sure it's cool. So put your hand on it, make sure it's cool to the touch. Hand on the engine, make sure that's cool to the touch. If it's hot and you open this cap, coolant will come spraying out at you and end up with severe burns. So just like the cap says warning, never open when hot. So if you can put your hand on it, it's cold to the touch, life is good. When you go to open these, you have to push down a little bit twist 90 degrees and you can hear it releasing a little pressure and then turn it the rest of the way and it'll come off. Now one of the things we have to figure out is how much are we going to pressurize this to. Some cars are higher pressure, some cars a little bit lower pressure. In this case the cap says 9 or 0.9 bar um, so I converted that from bar to PSI that equals 13 PSI. So at 13 PSI this cap allows pressure to go past this little rubber seal through this tube and then into my overflow tank. That keeps the system from having too much pressure. I'm going to set that to the side. And now to install the coolant pressure tester. This is one of the universal ones. Uh, I really like it. Um, so far I've been able to put it on almost every car I've tried um, without any adapters or anything. What's going to happen is there's two ways to slide this. You can slide it to pressurize the system or you can slide this over to pressurize the bladder. Um, just to show you what happens, and I close this and I slide it over. When I go to pressurize this, you'll see that little balloon fill up. This is what's going to seal inside of there to allow us to seal it off and build pressure. So that's what's really happening when we pressurize the bladder. And release that pressure. Tighten this back down. So I'm going to start by sliding it to bladder. That's going to allow me to pressurize the balloon here. To put this on, the balloon, the little bladder goes inside, and we got to use these little hooks to grab on the neck of the, the filler cap there. Once both of these are grabbing on, we can kind of back this off so they hook on real tight. And now we're going to pressurize that bladder. Before I do that though, I'm going to hook up this little tube right here. And this is going to go into the overflow bottle over there. So when I release pressure, instead of it spraying all over, it's going to go right into the overflow bottle and basically get recycled. So we're going to start by pressurizing the bladder. On the gauge here, you'll see a little uh, yellow zone over here. We're going to pressurize it until we hit that yellow zone which says bladder on the inside. It be a little hard to see. It takes usually three pumps maybe a little less. Looks like one did it. Pressurize it to bladder. Now I'm going to slide this piece over to system and now we're going to pressurize the system. Now to pressurize the system we look at that cap again. It says 13 psi. I like to go about 3 psi over that so in this case we're going to pressurize to 16 psi. That's 12, 15, and 16 PSI. Now we're going to do what they call the three minute test. We're going to let that sit for three minutes. If after three minutes it is still 16 PSI, then life is good. If after three minutes it's gone down, 
then we know we have a leak somewhere that we have to try and find. All right, we've hit our three-minute mark, and when we look at our gauge, we'll see, you see that we're now down to seven PSI. What that tells me is somewhere in our system we have a leak that's releasing pressure and coolant, so we now have to find it. Now, just to make this test a little better and to kind of show you what happens, I went ahead and put a pin in my upper radiator hose right there, and that's, in fact, where I'm losing my pressure at. So if I did not have that pin in there, it would have held pressure and my system would have been tested out just fine. So this one has a leak. In this case, I'd have to replace my upper radiator hose, but now I know what my problem is. On the other hand, if I did not have a leak, my pressure would have stayed the same. My pressure would have stayed up at 16 PSI where it started and that would have told me there were no problems. So to disconnect this, what we're going to do is slide this open to release the pressure. You can see some of the coolant coming out and that's why we let it into our overflow bottle. We'll let all that coolant kind of empty out. Once my gauge is down to zero PSI, no more bubbles are coming out, now I can release my bladder, slide it over, and now I can take this piece off.